that way. I know I can look that way, but can I dig under the, the surface a little bit more? And, and, and sometimes I say, you know, ask yourself, why would your spirit guide or your so-called dead relative suddenly turn against you and be evil towards you? Mm -hmm. And some of them say, well, that's never happened to me. My spirit guide's always been good to me and my dead relatives have always been good to me. Yeah, mine were good to me for a good 10 years as well. But when my mum and I tried to leave spiritualism, that's when our spirit guides and so-called dead relatives turned against us. So then you have to say, question, can you really trust these beings are who they say they are? You know, why just blindly trust the identity, scratch below the surface a little bit mm -hmm. and, and question, could they be impersonators? Could they be pretending to be your dead relative? And, you know, so many spiritualists and New Agers are very open-minded people. So I would say, well, we'll consider this. But, you know, what we're saying, you know, please don't just dismiss it right away as, as we're being crazy. You know, think about it even for five minutes. Could it be possible that your spirit guide is an impersonator? And um, and also consider the, the claims that we're making of, of Christ. And and if it, it is true, then, well, then, you know, where does that leave you and mm -hmm. where does that take you? Mm -hmm. mm. I, I, what is interesting there is several times instead of just pointing the finger you ask questions mm. uh is, is that something that uh, and again adrian was saying how you know um s soft as it were approach it was is, is that something you would do is to ask a question rather than make an accusation definitely i don't see any point making an accusation whatsoever and you know we've got to show people the love of christ and show them the love of god and the bible says it give a reason for your faith with gentleness and respect if you're going to talk to anyone in that way, they're going to turn away from you. So, you know, use a bit of wisdom and, and show God's love. And, you know, yeah, chatting to people and asking what, what they feel and what they've experienced and all that, it's got to be two-way. If you're just going to keep on at them, I think this and I think that and blah, 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 mm -hmm. they're just going to think, who does she think she is? And, mm -hmm. you know, they won't even listen to us. So, because some Christians can do that and, and it's chasing people away and it's kind of rude, really. You know, it's I think we do have to to be gentle and yeah Jesus was you know Jesus Amen. didn't condemn folks <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we've got some texts and uh, emails coming in we're, we'll come back to uh, that in just a minute but um, uh, this is from Vara and she says this uh, hi Doug thank you for always discussing hot topics okay uh, that many Christians have great difficulty in grasping for many uh, all, all of this is just a bit of harmless fun and and yeah I've heard Christians say that as well as non-Christians say that, okay. I recently raised a very strong objection to a youth leader who decided to take the youth group which my daughter attends to a Harry Potter movie. Okay, I had a discussion with her giving her God's word about this but to little avail the trip, the, the, the trip was cancelled. I was told that there were a few scriptures mentioned in the movie. Well, even the devil knows the scriptures. Uh, for me, it, it, it's like taking something that is rotten, coating it in chocolate and calling it good. Mm -hmm. uh, how would one make them understand the danger of this? What do you think about people going to see Harry Potter to explain to their children? God does tell us uh, not to have anything to do with evil, yet many Christians buy these books and read them. Um, now, I'd let you answer. I, I mean, I have to say, uh, I, I've not found any scriptures in, 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 in Harry Potter, so I'm not quite sure what the, the, uh, the, the youth leader was talking about mm -hmm. there. But how, how would you, if, if somebody approached you with that, how, how would you deal with that, Laura? I would say that when I first saw Harry Potter or, or read a little about, about it, I was totally and utterly surprised at the level of occultic um, things in it. And I, and I know that even some Christians will say, well, it's, it's just fiction, whatever. But I think perhaps unless you've really been in, involved in the occult and spiritualism, you won't really realise a lot of it is so, so true and, and, and could give children a taste for it. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't get a taste for it and don't pursue it later in life, you know, why even expose them to it? I mean, there's stuff in, in there that was just straight out of spiritualist activities and, and other kind of occult things, and you think, why even let them read that you know it's so and, and it can and obviously in this day and age there's a lot of more um, things that, that are done now that wouldn't have been done generations ago but recently I'm getting off the topic a wee bit but I'll, Carry on. I'll, it's kind of relevant in a sense recently I heard a, a Glasgow lady 
quite a prophetic lady and she was um, sharing really about coming revival and and even reformation and and you know we pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven and you know she was saying well wouldn't it be great you know with a reformation if, if the, the laws in the land were changed where the, the laws reflected the Ten Commandments you know like like they used to do um, in some places and I thought that really stirred in me and I thought yeah because you know when the the Witchcraft Act of 18... Whatever. <laughs> 50, whatever. You know, when that was repealed Peeled. in, like, 1950, spiritualism just whoosh, rose yes. right up. And with that, you know, it, it's become far more acceptable. And nowadays, of course, children can buy Harry Potter, they can buy Ouija boards, children can... They're exposed to all this occult stuff, like, a century or so. They wouldn't have been because it was illegal, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it's... Um, People might say, well, Laura, do you want witches locked up and jailed and persecuted? And no, I, I don't. You know, Jesus loves them and his mercy triumphs over judgment. He wants to, to set them free. So, again, I'm not being condemned in here, but, yes, yeah, it opens up floodgates for children, mm. things like that. Uh, Adrian, do, do, do you accept that sort of analogy that things that we're talking about in this supernatural realm, um, the, the devil can sort of coat it with chocolate so that it looks good yeah. and, and, and you think it tastes good and you think it might do you good yeah. um, but when you bite into it there's something totally different there. Do, do, do you get that picture from, from these things these days? Um, it's, it's normally when I find it's normally when people try to break away once they've been involved that the, the bitter taste starts to come into effect mm -hmm. or it happens while they're involved and they just accept it as being, you know, being involved. You know, there are good and bad, and sometimes the bad tries to get involved, you know, tries to get in there and affect you and, you know, cause things in your life to not work out. And so you kind of disassociate with that and say, well, that's bad, and I'll ask my guides for more protection, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, because th there's that scripture which talks about <coughs> Satan coming as an angel of light. Yeah. And therefore, you, you do get that picture, don't you? That, that, that outwardly, it, it can look okay, but actually inwardly, it, it, it's not. And, and you can look at it and say, well, I can't see any reason looking at it with, with logic. I can't see any reason not to be involved in these things. But when you get inside of it, you, as you found, mm -hmm. you do see reason why not to get involved in it. And it's important we understand what's within, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I hate yes and no answers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, no, it's the final. I, I actually asked a question which I shouldn't have asked a question. You could give a yes or no answer. But it, yeah, but, but, it, but it is, isn't it? I mean, that, that is exactly the fact that, that, that looking at something can seem so good. Yeah. But what you are saying today is, hey guys, check it out, because there's a warning, is there? There, there? There's a potential danger there. Yeah, well, there is a danger there. It's just that danger, as you've already highlighted, is sugar-coated. Mm. So you don't see it as being that. You just see the nice toffee apple. You don't see the rotten bit below the, you know, yes. below the coating. Yeah, um, yes. And it's not till you bite deep that at some point you'll start to see and taste the rottenness of it. Mm -hmm. And you'll think, you don't want to eat this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be away from this. <laughs>